for the love of exercise. Powered by Recovery Systems and your host, Coach Mike on the Mic. Welcome to episode three of For the Love of Exercise. With me today are some gals that we've interviewed before, Seaman and C. Jaya Cheng. And you guys are twins. Yes, we I are. thought I'd remind you. And uh, these gals are uh, amongst the top stand up paddle boarders in Singapore. In fact, you've represented Singapore, haven't you? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Uh, since 2015? Yep. 2015 yeah. till now. Yeah. All right. It's been more than a year, I think, since we last met up for a chat. Uh, however, uh, in the last year, you've actually got a secret weapon for your recovery, haven't you? Yes, pretty much. <laughs> All right, so tell us, tell us about that. You've got our recovery systems uh, duo. Tell us how that's changed your recovery or, or uh, how it's improved your recovery. So most of the time I'll use it um, right after my training. So once I'm done with my training, when I get back home, I will use it to boost it up for my energy. And then sometimes I will use it right after work because I've been standing the whole day at work and it's very tiring for my legs. Yeah. So it helps most of the time the next day that I feel that's something different with my recovery and it helps boost my energy when I start my exercise the next day, which really helps a lot. That's cool, CJ. Yep. So for me, I'll use it before I sleep because after work, one whole day of shift, my legs are swell up. So this gives me a really good recovery because once your legs swell up, this shows that there's no good circulation and recovery systems really, really helps to reduce um, swelling and also keeps the circulation keep going. And I also use it before my running or after running as well because it will help and it will boost my performance. Cool. We should uh, men uh, mention that CJ is a nurse, oh, yes, so uh, you, you must be clocking 10,000 plus steps easily every oh, day. Yes, every day, really, and, more than 10,000, I think. And Seaman, exercise ph physiologist? Or yeah. Exercise, yeah. Uh, so both uh, very much uh, not a desk, not a not sitting a desk down job, job, absolutely. So, yeah. All right, so. Um, so since we've since we've met you, in fact, you've got a key event coming up mm. uh, next month, right? Yes. Can you tell us about that? So it's the Osaka Sub App World Tour. So it's really an elite event. Right. So this will be our first time participating. Yeah. So it'll be an exciting one for us. Yeah. So you're racing in the pro ranks, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. All right. This is uh, quite a step up from three or four years ago, right? Yes, sir. Right. Pretty much. So we will be competing with lots of good peddlers out there. Yep. And it will be an eye opener for us. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us. You know, you've progressed a long way in the sport. What are you doing, or what have you been doing in the last twelve months? Uh, you know, how's the evolution of your training been going? What are you doing differently now to get yourself up to the next level? Can you give us some uh, some tips and tricks? Yes. So for me, because lately, as in for the past few months, before that, I was trying, I wasn't doing much gym workout. Therefore, that's causing doing long paddles. I have fatigue on my shoulders and arms. So therefore, right now, I've been stepping up, doing more gym work, strengthening, because strengthening is really, really important for each okay. sport, actually. Specifically, give us a few examples of what you've been doing differently. The exercises? Yes. So strengthening my shoulders, because that's the most important part that I'm yep. always using. Lat pull-downs. Lat pull-downs. Yep. Shoulder uh, press. Shoulder press also, and what's it called? Tricep. Triceps. Triceps. Tricep, bicep. Bicep, yeah. yeah. Uh, a lot of core work involved in paddling properly too, right? Yes, yeah. core muscle strength. Yeah. Usually it's from your stomach. Yep. And also leg strength. Actually, it's a whole body workout. Absolutely. Yes. So bracing yourself on a moving, for those that have never tried stand-up paddle boarding, uh, the, the ocean is not flat and it's, and it's uh, consistently moving. Uh, so there's constant stabilization, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're anchoring through your feet, but your whole core is involved. And not, you're not only just balancing, you're also uh, engaging, engaging in paddling as well. Yeah, pretty much. All right. So um, talk us through, and uh, how about you, Seaman? What's How's your 
training changed in the last year or so? So what I do, uh, what I do it's um, basically for me, I'll train on my strength, which is I'll do on push-ups uh, using weights uh, like dumbbells and also um, resistance bands, which helps to strengthen for my shoulders especially because I have a long-term injury, which is my rotator cuff. Uh, being diagnosed with uh, rotator cuff tendinopathy so that's the thing that I have to keep on rehabilitating, strengthening it, preventing it from any worsening so that in the long term of running that I will not feel like sh frozen shoulders because if I stop doing any strengthening exercises for rehab and um, I might need to have a lot of arthritis and all that so it's kind of a restriction for my daily activities Stuff it's really like really good that you understand all athletes will have some weak link link in their chain. It's really good that you've identified that. And uh, you know, there's an old saying: an ounce of prehab mm. is worth a pound of rehab. Yeah. So getting on top of things and staying on top of things is very important. Mm. Uh, so I I touched on water. In fact, you're a little bit late for this uh, for this video because you got stuck at sea in a storm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is Gladys and I looking at our watch going, oh, they're, you know, they're normally on time. And of course, you couldn't even call us. You're out on the water. Storm yeah, came in. That's right. Uh, so pad paddling against the wind to get back. Describe what was going on. Oh, that's really tough. But we like the storm. But the problem is because you're only paddling on either side because you have to change. So Therefore, it depends on the wind it. direction as well. So if the storm hits you really hard and then the wind gusts, it's like pushing you back and then it's like treadmill you can't really push yourself forward one so step forward two steps back yeah that's <laughs> right well, you're paddling on one side coming back as well yeah. right so very tiring if you can't alternate i would yes. imagine um yeah okay so but no lightning no no lightning. thank god there's no lightning <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been on the water i've seen it i've seen twisters or water spouts drop oh. down uh, near mm -hmm. Aloha and actually come in. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever seen that? Have you ever been close to, to that? Nope, almost close. We saw a water spot yeah. in the middle, but yep. we didn't manage to go close yet because we were seeing, oh, right in front. Right, 100 meters away or? About 100 mm -hmm. meters to 200. Yeah, yeah, they're quite powerful though. So, um, it, uh, so, so luckily, not anywhere near you. So, water conditions, Japan, yeah. different to here? Uh, oh, this time round is a different because it's right in the bay. Right. Um, is it's it in a river? River Osaka River. Okay. Yeah, yeah. well known right in the city, heart of Osaka. Okay. So I guess uh, Osaka wants the tourism um, yes. to get everyone to see um, what's up is. So that's how they plan their event at Osaka around the city area. Okay. Which everyone can. Just a quick description of your boards for those who have maybe seen people do it but they don't really understand. Um, how, how long are your boards? 12 foot to 14 foot right. long. And uh, how narrow are they for mm, you two? It can get narrow. And your like boards your though, 24? 23. 23 oh, inch. So I'm writing on a 14 by 23, which is the NSP Puma board. Mm, okay. Mine would be a 12, 6, 24. 24. So the narrower they are, the tippier they are, right? Yeah, right. But technically the faster, the you, faster go. you go. So your your balance, your core strength and everything has to really be on your game on yeah. a skinny board, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So most of the rental boards are around 28 or the, or maybe even 30 yeah, wide, right? right? For, for us people that uh, only use it occasionally <laughs> and... Uh, uh, to give us a fair chance of actually standing up and, yeah, so and staying up. Yes, because it's very stable. Yes. Yeah, you and can then go easy on it. Yep. Yeah. Now, uh, the, the sport involves a fair bit of cardio, not only strength, a fair yes. bit of cardio, right? Tell us about your cardio work to get ready for racing. Mm, running. Yep. Running is always important. I all right. For all sports. How long are races typically? Give us, give us an idea of mm. how many minutes a race could be and how many kilometers talking uh, stand-up paddleboard so races? 10 kilometer to 18 kilometer. That okay. is for long distance. For technical race, it will be about three kilometers. Yeah. Yeah. So 10 kilometers, how long would that race take typically? 
one, one hour, hour thirty minutes, one hour to fifth, one hour to fifteen, 15 minutes. minutes. Right, yeah, it depends on how good you are. Yeah. So the elites could do about one hour. Right. Mm. Yeah. So current and wind have a big role to play. Yes, it's, it's that's not, right. It's not like running on an athletics track where nothing much changes. Yeah. Uh, and and the conditions are either headwind, tailwind, and mm. so you've got all sorts of factors. Mm. Can you uh, can you feel the current? Can when you, you are pedaling? Yes. Can you, you get a sense of what the current and how strong it is? And yes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Because uh, like when we pedal um, for a competition in Sentosa race. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we cross over the channel towards the island, so that's where we felt the current that is pretty strong towards us. And then we are trying to get pushed away and then trying to go to the different direction which causes a lot of strength and techniques to stay on the same route because yep. if you are away from that route mm. you tend to be drifting away which will lead you into some dangerous uh, situation yeah I also see so I've seen a lot of your videos practicing race starts where it's a sprint holding the board which is not a small thing no. uh, a sprint down the beach and then launching yourself onto the board yeah. as soon as it has some buoyancy mm -hmm. yes. and then planting your feet and starting to pedal yeah. and uh, it, it's, ha it's happening in a matter of seconds now that didn't happen by accident right? No. <laughs> lots of practice? Yes, yeah. lots of practice. That is quite a bitch start. For technical race yep. they have to do that. If yeah. uh, we, We'll be posting the gals uh, Instagram um, uh, IDs at the end of the video so do have a look at what they do uh, from a training point of view it's quite uh, quite spectacular i don't think uh, that anyone who's just starting out on stand up paddle board should uh, possibly attempt it uh, just quite that soon <laughs> now also notice you're moving around a lot on the board and that can be uh, uh, conditions can dictate that right oh downwinding yeah. all right what happens so when you're downwinding you do not want your boat to be plunging down on right. the water really deep because you may fall off, so you have to move a step back, and I think you catch the wave. So, oh. so the, just keeping the nose of the board yes. up. Mm -hmm. All right, and downwind is a tailwind. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Now, tailwind. What sort of speeds are you going in a tailwind? Mm. Okay. Oh, Singapore, you cannot match up to Perth because last year we were in Perth doing the downwind race. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it was twenty-five to thirty knots wind, full wow. blown, and it's really, really good. Yeah, yeah. Really, really so maybe epic. 15, 20 kilometers yeah. an hour? Yeah. That's right. My really, goodness. Really stoked. <laughs> literally pedaling and yep. you're yeah, just surfing literally. You're, you're catching, catching bumps. You're waves, also able to catch yeah. some swells on yes. yep. aren't you? So swells. having a sense for what coming is is quite important. Yes. Yeah, you so have to time it right as well. Eyes in the back of your head. Mm. <laughs> Very good. All right, now, um, so what? tell us about some of your goals in the sport because you're... Uh, you come a long way. You were going to throw yourself into the lion's den, so to speak, in, in Osaka, right? Mm -hmm. it, amongst the pros. What would be your dream or your ambition going forward in the next, say, three to five years? Mm, three to five years. So, what you want? Because you were going over to Australia to train. Mm. train to train. Hopefully, to go over Australia to train. Yeah. That's so. Our aim. Because that's the only area that we can train really well and it's closer to Singapore. Right. They have the different kind of conditions. Downwind, flat water. Do you mean Perth? Or, or right. Um maybe the any part of, of Australia. Australia. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Training for an extended amount of time, a month or two or probably a lot there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and what is the end game? Is is stand up paddle boarding going to be a Sea Games, um, mm. a Sea Games sport? Do you think? Hard to say. But maybe have a chance in Asia Games because um, there's this Asia Sub Tour League that is ongoing. Yeah, and then um, it's part of the App World Tour series, but they have an Asia App World Tour series yep. as well, which is um, the last race was in Hong Kong. And then um, the upcoming one would be in the last race would be in Japan Fukuoka. Okay. So, all right. So that requires a, yeah. a few uh, a few relationships along the way, and we're we're really glad to have you as our water sport ambassadors. So thank you very much mm -hmm. for the great job you're doing, and in, in being the best you can be in our sport. And 
and hopefully we're helping you. That mention some of your other sponsors. NSP. NSP. Okay. So what do NSP do? Um, so we do write on their boards. Yep. We're a brand ambassador for it. Alrighty. Yep. Anything else? Mm-hmm. All right. So look, the girls are looking for um, sunglasses sponsors and uh, possibly uh, sunblock things Sunscreen. of that nature. And uh, we can attest that they're actually very good ambassadors. All right. Now some fast fire questions. Top of mind. Mm-hmm. Favorite food. Favorite food, uh, chicken rice. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Fried rice. Fried rice, so local. <laughs> All right, uh, if there was a movie title to describe you, what would it be? Okay. The Hulk. Oops, no, because last time... The Hulk? Yeah. <laughs> There's a story behind it. Because <laughs> back then, during the school days, yeah, my track and field mates would call me The Hulk. Because I run faster than the boys. Oh yeah, that's scary. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. The Avengers. The Avengers. Yeah. Which character? Um, What's your superpower? A uh, oh Thor. Oh. T- what? Thor. Thor. Okay. <laughs> All right. Your exercise kryptonite, the thing you hate to do, that is also the thing that will make the most difference. I think you touched on it earlier with yeah, your shoulder. Yeah, which is uh, more of doing the external rotation. Taking your medicine and doing the prehab. How yeah. about you? Oh, um, pedaling fast. Doing that kind of fast stroke. All right. Okay. A uh, couple of couple of other questions. Your the hardest race you've ever been in? Japan. Japan race in 2015 because yeah. that was the first, first, first encounter. Uh, Huge swells. swells. Water, water temperature. Water temperature. Yeah, it's okay. Twenty okay. degrees. I like oh, it. Nice. <laughs> um, and toughest competitor. Ooh, it's all the elites. What What about locally? Tough, locally. Toughest competitor. Or oh, coach. My coach. My coach. Charlotte. All right. Okay. And between the two of you, not that this is a competition, who tends to win more? Or does that change? I think oh, recently. It depends because sometimes it could be Sutya, <laughs> and sometimes it could be me. So, Ultimately. yeah. Ah, there it's we go. It's kind of hard to tell. Some, some growth spurts coming in <laughs> and some secret training going on. Yeah. on. Uh, so, that's really good. All right. Well, it's been great to have you on and also to catch up with you guys because uh, it's been a year and it, the timing's really good because you're about a month out from your race so we'll be keeping out um, we'll be keeping an eye out and, and wishing you all the best you taking your boards with you no so everyone racing the same boards or can you choose uh, choice? yeah so we're gonna race on the NSP new um, 2019 Carolina bot which is a sunken deck, recess deck. Right. Yeah. And it's our first time trying out that bot, so it could be kind of different yeah, condition because it's um, designed to be on a flat water, on a rough water, all kinds of, all kinds of water and, conditions. And all rounder. All rounder. Yeah, very good. All right, well, we wish you all the best. We're going to be keeping an eye out for you. Thanks for being our water sport ambassadors mm-hmm. and uh, for, for doing such a great job. So uh, it's Coach Mike on the mic. Episode three's uh, in the can now, and we will look forward to your company next time. I'm going to do that again because I can edit now. You see. Oh. So it's Coach Mike on the mic. That's episode three, and we look forward to your company on the next time. I'm going to do it again. It's I don't normally I normally do one take. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's one strange. take. I, but today I'm nervous. <laughs> oh why? Is it because of the... I know, you two are getting older now. You're getting a bit cheeky, you see. <laughs> so it's Coach Mike on the mic. Uh, it's the... In, in, blah, blah, blah. Bloop is real. <laughs> Coach Mike on the mic. Thanks for joining us. This is episode three, and we look forward to your company next time. Ciao.